Good evening. My name is Jackie Leonard, and boy, have I got a secret tonight. I've got a secret brought to you tonight by... Tony, creator of fine beauty products for the woman who prefers the natural look of beauty care at home. Now, from New York, here is I've Got a Secret, starring, while Gary Moore is on vacation, Henry Morgan. Thank you, Luke. Thank you. Welcome to, uh, what's his name? <laughs> and while Gary's away, we shall play. Now, let's meet the members of our team. First, there's Bill Cullen. And then, Betsy Palmer. Yes. <laughs> and then, Alan King. Yes. <laughs> and then, Bess Meyerson. And that's our team. <laughs> Alan, <laughs> the only rule is that while you're sitting in for me, you'll be just as gracious and as sweet and charming as I always am. That's why they called me particularly, because I run close. I, I can't hear I you. bubble like you do, too. Yes, you're effervescent <laughs> and show a lot of teeth, because I laugh and up and smile. And all. <laughs> now, are you ready to play the game? Yes, yes we sir. are. I'm glad to hear that. May we have our first contestant, please? Come in, sit right down. Good evening to you, sir. Will you tell us your name, please, and where you're from? E.O. Milton Larson, Ironton, Colorado. Mr. Larson from Ironton, Colorado, and if you'll whisper your secret to me, we'll show it at the same time to folks at home. Panel, the only clue I can give you is it's something Mr. Larson is. Bill, we'll start with you. Is there a title connected with this, Mr. Larson? Yes, there is. Is it the first of anything? Yes. Is it the only of anything? Yes. You are the only man to... <laughs> that wasn't fair. That's all I, got. I have a feeling, Bill, you may have been right. <laughs> we'll never know. That's 20 down, 60 to go. We go to Betsy Park. Mr. Larson, does this have to do with the part of the uh, country that you're from? Yes. Does it have to do with um, the West? Yes. And cowboys and things like that? Um, yes. Yes. Does it have to do with maybe, are you, um, are you involved in any sort of police work? Uh, yes. No. A sheriff uh, of some sort? Uh, you may be, but... Um, <laughs> if you are, you forgot to tell me in rehearsal. I, I think the answer is probably is no. 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 Then you're not a sheriff or anything like that. No. Are you a cowhand of no. some sort? A cowboy? No. 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 Does it have to do with gold? Yes. Oh, you're a 49er. Um, oh, hold the phone. Um, yes. Mr. Larson, forgive me, but it doesn't really have to do with gold. Mr. Larson and I do much better than you do. <laughs> we were doing fine. It's true, you make a lovely couple, but I don't think you're going to get anywhere the way things are going. It's 40 down. We have 40 to go, and we're up to Alan King. Uh, Mr. Larson, uh, were you a prospector of any kind? Yes. Uh, is the title that you hold have to do with prospecting? Yes. We no. <laughs> Mr. Larson, the way the secret is presented, <laughs> that wouldn't happen. You know, it, I mean, it's not in there. Mm -hmm. It may be true, but it's not in there. Henry, <laughs> Henry, Henry, just before you go on, I have an idea. That Mr. Larson's secret is he never has said no to anything. <laughs> uh, uh, he's our comical yeah. fellow. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you, well, Mr. Mr. Larson, uh, now that the gate is over, uh, were you uh, a very young man when this uh, thing happened, or this uh, that gave you the title that you now hold? N no. Look, he said no. I got to. <laughs> uh, does it have to do with Colorado in particular? Yes. Sixty down, twenty to go. Our last hope, Bess Myers. Oh. Um. <laughs> 
Mr. Larson, are you perhaps the oldest gentleman to hold this particular office? Yes. Is that we, mentioned um, in the secret? No. Well, it, you may be right, but... Uh... <laughs> Is it, is, it a is it a political office that you hold? A political office? Uh, well, no. Mm. Yes. No. yes. <laughs> I know what. I know when I'm... I know. <laughs> the next He's five running. answers are yes. He's running. <laughs> He's running for something. You're a champion. Some uh, you're a champion of something, aren't you? Champion liar. Champion liar. <laughs> 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 he, uh, Mr. Larson agrees with you. <laughs> no, it's, it's very simple. Uh, very difficult. He's a ballet dancer. What can he I can tell you, uh, panel, Mr. Larson is the most important citizen in Ironton, Colorado. As a matter of fact, Mr. Larson is the only citizen oh. in Ironton. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Larson, <laughs> tell me something. Living all alone in Ironton, uh, as the only citizen in the town, what do you do for food and supplies? I have to, se I have to send to the nearest town for it. Well, how, how far is that? About eight miles. Uh-huh. Do you drive or what? I drive. Drive, I see. Tell me, what, when, when Ironton was a, a whole place, what was its industry? Mining. 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 I have a picture here of... Ironton, in 1890, when the population was 1,800 people. And here is a picture of it today, when its population is one people. And this is the house, Mr. Larson's house, right there. Now, well, we get to that, I'll tell you. The mining sort of disappeared, and there was one small industry that followed that. What was that? Tourists. Uh tourists, and last year, how many were there? Five. 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 <laughs> no. We, it's not a big industry. No, it's no. comfortable. I should stress the fact that Ironton is not a ghost town. It's uh, still incorporated by the state of Colorado, despite the fact that Mr. Larson is the only resident. Now, I know that you, uh, you told us you had um, electricity, and you have a phone. Yes. Yeah. Uh, how about uh, television? I haven't a television. No? No, I haven't. Oh, <laughs> this was our one chance to have a rating of 100. <laughs> you know, if we watched this show, we'd have a perfect rating in Ireland. Nothing. <laughs> well, uh, friends, if you're looking for peace and quiet, if you want to get off the beaten track, <laughs> Ironton, Colorado is the place. Everybody get in the car right now and go to Ironton. No, that way you'll run into too many Americans. <laughs> well, it's a town that has a soul, and this is the soul. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> May we have our next contestant, please? How do you do? See you. Would you tell us your name, please, and where you're from? My name is Dennis Mead, and I'm from Delaware, Ohio. Now, panel, at the moment, Mr. C, uh, Mr. Mead is a senior at Ohio Wesleyan. And he recently com uh, completed a project for which he used, among other things, the following equipment. A one-sixth horsepower electric motor, two small transformers, one 26-inch bicycle wheel, six and a half feet of insulated wire, wire, one oil temperature gauge, a fan from an air compressor, a telephone, and parts from three sewing machines. <laughs> There's more, but these are the important items. All right, Mr. Mead, now if you'll just whisper your secret to me, we'll show the folks at home what you use these things for. Panel, of course, um, the clue is, there is no clue. You have to find out what he did with this equipment. Bill, you're a very mechanical fellow. Why don't we start with you? I have an idea, but it's probably wrong, so it's all right. With uh, the motor, the trick, you built a better mousetrap. 
No. You built an inferior mousetrap? Could be. Did this machine of yours, or the final contrivance, uh, I know it ran, but did it travel? Did it move as such over the ground? Or no. It stood still, though, and ran? Yes. And did it accomplish a useful purpose? I think so. $20 down, $60 to go. Betsy Palmer. Um, is it used on land in preference to water, Mr. Mead? It doesn't make any difference. It doesn't make any difference. It could be used. Uh, Here we go again. Mr. Mead, the way we run this, we don't argue. Uh, Betsy happens to be a wonderful girl. Just, you know, yes or no. Because otherwise, you, you give the clue away. It's better on I land. I mean, you get the answer away. It's better on land. Yeah. Good. Um, does it drive something? Uh, could you be more specific? Well, I mean, like, um, <laughs> be more specific. Does it drive, like, say, for instance, egg beaters or beaters of some sort? Does it make a rotation of some sort that drives it or something? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that was more specific. I, 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 I did? It does drive something. Yes. It does drive something. It does it serve <laughs> a practical purpose rather than, say, just a, an experiment, a scientific experiment? Yes, I think so. You built it with a particular, particular, uh, and, and Henry's laughing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've but seen it. It, it does what, what Betsy said it does. It drives everything up and, and things. Yeah. And uh, what, could it be, is, it a, is there a pattern on it? A pattern? Pattern. No. Pattern or pattern? Pattern. Oh, pattern. Yes. There isn't a pattern on it? No, no I wish I'd I like could. I'd like to steal it. <laughs> Sixty down, twenty dollars left, and Bess Meyerson. Are we going to see it tonight? Oh yes. Oh, <laughs> is it smaller than? Uh... <laughs> no, that's the other no, show. No, that's the other show. <laughs> uh, does it pull anything? No. Ah, it goes. It it drives it. Drives oh, what? I have to drive something. Have to find it has to pull that out. <laughs> does it? And it moves along the ground. Is that correct, sir? No. No. Oh, oh no! Oh. It goes up in the air. Along the ground. No. It no. stays still. Right. I see it. Manufactured. Um, panel. Look. We really. You, theoretically, I suppose we'd say you lost the game, but could I give you another clue? Sure. Um, I'd like you to listen to Mr. Mead's project. <laughs> Well, I know that gave it away, but... Wake you up in the morning. So Anybody got an idea? I'm going to wake you up. For my wife. Luke Goldberg thing. Um, I'll tell you. For a quiet Sunday afternoon. <laughs> it wasn't... In a way, it's almost unfair. Mr. Mead is majoring in fine arts at um, Ohio Wesleyan. Oh, you made one of those at Moody's? Arts. No, well, yeah, see? Now, if you knew anything really about fine art... You... I've seen pictures of these things. <laughs> Have you? Yes, it's the moving sculpture that drives every other right. little bit of piece of mine. It's like yes and no. The no hold, because wait till you see the yes. Would you open <laughs> the curtains, please? Do you still want to claim that this is a work of art? Yes. Would you mind turning it on? <laughs> Isn't it a dinger? <laughs> No, it is a fact. He doesn't particularly want me to, to say this, but I think it's necessary. He is a very serious um, artist. He's not terribly serious with this. But the fact is that he did win a first prize last, with the last year? Right. Uh, with another creation, which we just happen to have with us, which would be kind enough to get the other brilliant uh, production. <laughs> This one, Funny. wow. <laughs> oh, now that's lovely. Look at this that. This is so charming. I, that is so I'd buy one if I knew where. Would you mind uh, starting the motor in the engine room there? Uh, the little There's really nothing. Burning. Just watch it. There's nothing much to say. Oh, dear. Um, 
<laughs> Mr. Mead, you obviously have a brilliant look. <laughs> if there were a price on this, what would it be? It's not for sale, but I, would, I, would, I don't think I'd sell it. Oh, no. well, thanks for coming in anyway. <laughs> <laughs> we certainly enjoy it. Thank you very much. I tried to get it for you, Bill. <laughs> Panel, I have some sad news. You'll have to leave for a little while. We have to arrange a little something. Soundproof room? Fine. And we'll be back in just 60 seconds. Now it's time to meet our special guest for tonight, a man who is so gentle and sweet and warm and charming. It's something I've always wanted to say to his face, but I've never been able to get a word in edgewise. Here is Jack E. Leonard. I think, I think, oh, yeah. you remember me, Mr. Smith, my name. <laughs> I know your brother. Yeah, do you? Well, he's got a cough. Now, uh, I have to explain. Jack is wearing a little something extra here. Under the beard, two wires lead up out of this thing into two little um, earphones. Mm. Through this little device, we are feeding what we call white noise into the earphones. It's just a sound. Frank, could you do that so... Uh... <laughs> that sound, not quite that loud, is being fed into Jack's ears, and he can't hear anything else. He won't be able to hear, he can't hear now, what I say or what the panel will say. The whole plot, of course, is that the panel will ask him questions. He ain't gonna know what they're talking about. <laughs> But I will give him the knee under the desk when I think he should answer. Now, this may be a um, shambles, and it uh, may be very, pretty funny. The secret, of course, is that they do not know that this man is deaf. <laughs> All right, let's bring the panel back, please. Uh, as I say, uh, it's uh, certainly fine that you're in New York. Uh, it's nice being here uh, with the Braille Institute. <laughs> and, um... We hope that things work out for you. I hope so, for my sake. Yeah. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Of course, you all know Jack E. Leonard. And um, the clue to a secret concerns something that is happening, and we'll start the questioning with Betsy Palmer. Jack, is it happening this moment? That's a little, absolutely correct. Is it happening under your beard? <laughs> mm, it's also correct, but not absolutely. <laughs> is that beard hiding anything? Yes. Is it hiding something in the front of you? I don't know what you're talking about, but I'm certainly enjoying your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> now that's strange. <laughs> I beg your pardon? That's uh, $20 down and 60 to go, and we go to Alan King. <laughs> you're, you're waiting for Moby Dick. Uh, he's a very thrilling fellow. Is it, I like that vest. He must have a dirty shirt on or something. <laughs> is this a mechanical device under the beard? You know something? I just realized you're a better panelist than Henry. <laughs> uh, this is, Henry, is this a mechanical device under the uh, beard? The answer I have is a definite maybe. <laughs> How come you're so funny here and you don't get laughs in any place? The secret is all of these ad-libs are written and you have it in front of you. You ask some mighty peculiar questions, my boy. I think I have a great future in the American Army. <laughs> Alan? I quit, Alan. <laughs> Let him okay. fight with best, Chief. 40 down, 40 to go, best uh, Meyerson. Are you all right, Jack? <laughs> I can answer that in, uh, that question in two words. Maybe. <laughs> You're not answering our question. Obviously, that's part of the secret. Is, is that correct? I refuse to answer on that ground. <laughs> You're just being your own miserable contrary <laughs> self, right? <laughs> no. Henry looks so unhappy. Are you all right, Henry? Uh, I refuse to answer on the grounds that it may tend to incriminate him. Oh, I see. <laughs> I see. So you've decided... Are you playing some kind of role? You talking to, to me? No, to Jack. Oh. 
The answer is no, but don't get discouraged, dear, because it just says, in my eyes. <laughs> Nothing to do with anything. That's right. All right, let's cut this around the answers. Yes. Are you still married, Bess? Darn it. <laughs> it's 60 down, 20 to go. Two darn it behind, leave. and it's Bill Cullen. Today is Monday, Jack. I have to say yes to that, and I'd like to say no. So I'll take my Uh, Jack, well, this is I've Got a Secret, heard regularly for some I years. I dare you repeat that question, sir. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You're not hearing us, Jack, I would gather. Oh. What? He's a, he's a, he, he talks pretty good. Uh, I think you talk about as good as the Mets play. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, this well, is New York City. Dietetically speaking, it's ridiculous. <laughs> Uh, Jack, I've heard a lot of terrible things about you. You know something? Are you, are you wearing contact lenses over your glasses? <laughs> so the whole thing is that the answers are prearranged and Jack doesn't hear the question. You're a nice looking kid. I, 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 I like your work. I liked you when you wanted the name of Jackie Coogan many years ago. <laughs> Well, I tell you. <laughs> In a way, I think um, you won the game, wouldn't you say, Jack? You were right, Bill. Yeah. He can't oh. hear a bloody thing. We can keep him here for hours. Good. He doesn't even know what time it is. Jack, we're even now. I don't owe you the 300, huh? <laughs> We're all even, right, Jack? The 300, we're even? <laughs> Why do you want to rent and walk? <laughs> Just raise your hand if you're even. <laughs> under the, under the um, beard, see these things run into his ears. We've been pumping sound in there, just plain sound, what we call white sound. I can't hear a thing now. <laughs> it worked like a charm. Uh, too, too bad you weren't sitting over the panel, so I couldn't hear you. <laughs> okay, and I really enjoy doing that because uh, I, I listen to my own delivery, and I don't like it. <laughs> fine. I thank you very much, Mr. Morgan. I want to thank, thank you, you for allowing well, me to play on this show you know. because Glad you'll never be on it again. Sense. Thanks. And thank you, uh, Alan King, for causing a son of your jack to me. <laughs> Henry, I've enjoyed your work for many years. I've known you for about 25. Of course, I didn't even like you in those days. <laughs> but I want to wish all the luck in the world and remember the words of Ben Casey, who once said, Now you cut that out. <laughs> As far as I know, we'll be back. <laughs> but first, here's an important message. Oh, I'm glad to... Where, 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 where? Oh, Alan is going tomorrow, July the 2th, to England. Why? To Glasgow for the Royal Command performance for Queen Elizabeth. That ain't in England. In Glasgow is part of Great Britain. Ah, yes. What, sir, what's a command performance for the... What? Yes, I know. Thanks very much. <laughs> My suit just came back. <laughs> No, that's fascinating. Uh, a whole big thing, a lot of American performers? Or uh, Jerry Lewis and myself are the only two Americans. Isn't that that's an international uh, command. They have acts from uh, 26 countries. Lovely. Ah, marvelous. I envy you and uh, congratulate you. Thank you. I'm, look I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> Gary will be back uh, next week, I'm sorry to say, because I like to do the show. But he'll be back, and, and I'll be sitting there. And I'm sure you'll be delighted to see him. Darn it. Yeah. Good night. <laughs> Good evening. My name is Jackie Leonard, and boy, have I got a secret tonight. I've got a secret brought to you tonight by Tony, creator of fine beauty products for the woman who prefers the natural look of beauty care at home.
Now, from New York, here is I've Got a Secret, starring, while Gary Moore is on vacation, Henry Morgan. Thank you, Luke. Thank you. Welcome to, uh, what's his name? <laughs> and while Gary's away, we shall play. Now, let's meet the members of our team. First, there's Bill Cullen. And then, Betsy Palmer. Yes. <laughs> and then, Alan King. Yes. <laughs> and then, Bess Meyerson. And that's our team. <laughs> Alan, <laughs> the only rule is that while you're sitting in for me, you'll be just as gracious and as sweet and charming as I always am. That's why they called me particularly, because I run close. I, I can't hear I you. bubble like you do, too. Yes, you're effervescent <laughs> and show a lot of teeth, because I laugh and up and smile. And all. <laughs> now, are you ready to play the game? Yes, yes we sir. are. I'm glad to hear that. May we have our first contestant, please? Come in, sit right down. Good evening to you, sir. Will you tell us your name, please, and where you're from? E.O. Milton Larson, Ironton, Colorado. Mr. Larson from Ironton, Colorado, and if you'll whisper your secret to me, we'll show it at the same time to folks at home. Panel, the only clue I can give you is it's something Mr. Larson is. Bill, we'll start with you. Is there a title connected with this, Mr. Larson? Yes, there is. Is it the first of anything? Yes. Is it the only of anything? Yes. You are the only man to anything? Yes. Is it the only of anything? Yes. You are the only man to... <laughs> That wasn't fair. I have a feeling, Bill, you may have been right. <laughs> we'll never know. That's 20 down, 60 to go. We go to Betsy Park. Mr. Larson, does this have to do with the part of the country that you're from? Yes. Does it have to do with um, the West? Yes. And cowboys and things like that? Um, yes. Yes. Does it have to do with maybe, are you, um, are you involved in any sort of police work? Uh, yes. You're no. sheriff of uh, some sort? Uh, you may be, but, um... <laughs> <laughs> if you are, you forgot to tell me in rehearsal. <laughs> I think the answer is probably is... No. 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 Then you're not a sheriff or anything like that? No. Are you a cow hand of no. some sort? A cowboy? No. no. No? Does it have to do with gold? Yes. Oh, you're a 49er. Um, oh, the phone, um... Yes. Mr. Larson, forgive me, but it doesn't really have to do with gold. Mr. Larson and I do much better than you do. <laughs> we were doing fine. It's true, you make a lovely couple, but I don't think you're going to get anywhere the way things are going. It's 40 down. We have 40 to go, and we're up to Alan King. Uh, Mr. Larson, uh, were you a prospector of any kind? Yes. Uh, is the title that you hold have to do with prospecting? Yes. We're no. No. <laughs> Mr. Larson, the way the secret is presented, <laughs> that wouldn't happen. You know, it, I mean, it's not in there. Mm -hmm. It may be true, but it's not in there. Henry, <laughs> Henry, Henry, just before you go on, I have an idea. Mr. Larson's secret is he never has said no to anything. <laughs> uh, he's our comical yeah. fellow. Yeah. Uh, well, Mr. Where? Mr. Larson, uh, now that the gate is over, uh, were you uh, a very young man when this uh, thing happened, or this uh, that gave you the title that you now hold? Good evening. My name is Jackie Leonard, and boy, have I got a secret tonight. I've got a secret brought to you tonight by Tony, creator of fine beauty products for the woman who prefers the natural look of beauty care at home. Now, from New York, here is I've Got a Secret, starring, while Gary Moore is on vacation, Henry Morgan. 
Welcome to, uh, what's his name? <laughs> and while Gary's away, we shall play. Now, let's meet the members of our team. First, there's Bill Cullen. And then, Betsy Palmer. Yes. <laughs> and then, Alan King. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and then, Bess Meyerson. And that's our team. <laughs> Alan, <laughs> the only rule is that while you're sitting in for me, you'll be just as gracious and as sweet and charming as I always am. <laughs> That's why they called me particularly, because I run close. I, I can't hear I you. bubble like you do, too. Yes, you're effervescent <laughs> and show a lot of teeth, because I laugh it up and smile. And I... <laughs> now, are you ready to play the game? Yes, yes we are. I'm glad to hear that. May we have our first contestant, please? Come in, sit right down. Good evening to you, sir. Will you tell us your name, please, and where you're from? E.O. Milton Larson, Ironton, Colorado. Mr. Larson from Ironton, Colorado, and if you'll whisper your secret to me, we'll show it at the same time to folks at home. Panel, the only clue I can give you is it's something Mr. Larson is. Bill, we'll start with you. Is there a title connected with this, Mr. Larson? Yes, there is. Is it the first of any N No. Look, he said no. I got to <laughs> uh, Does it have to do with Colorado in particular? Yes. 60 down, 20 to go. Our last hope, Bess Meyerson. Oh. Um... <laughs> Mr. Larson, are you perhaps the oldest gentleman to hold this particular office? Yes. Is that we, mentioned um, in the secret? No. Well, it, you may be right, but... Uh... <laughs> well, I, I, is, it, is, it a, is it a political office that you hold? A political office? Uh, well, no. Mm. Yes. Yes. <laughs> The next five running. answers are yes. He's running. <laughs> He's running for something. You're a champion. Some, uh, you're a champion of something, aren't you? Champion liar. Champion liar. <laughs> 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 he, uh, Mr. Larson agrees with you. <laughs> no, it's, it's very simple. Uh, very difficult. <laughs> He's a ballet dancer. What can he I can tell you, uh, panel, Mr. Larson is the most important citizen in Ironton, Colorado. As a matter of fact, Mr. Larson is the only citizen <laughs> in Ironton. <laughs> Mr. Larson, <laughs> tell me something. Living all alone in Ironton, uh, as the only citizen in the town. What do you do for food and supplies? I have to, se I have to send to the nearest town for it. Well, how, how far is that? About eight miles. Uh-huh. Do you drive or what? Drive. Drive, I see. Tell me, what, when, when Ironton was a, a whole place, what was its industry? Mining. 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 I have a picture here of Ironton in 1890 when the population was 1,800 people. And here is a picture of it today, when its population is one people. And this is the house, Mr. Larson's house, right there. What happened to you? Now, all right, Mr. Mead, now if you'll just whisper your secret to me, we'll show the folks at home what you use these things for. Panel, of course, um, the clue is, there is no clue. You have to find out what he did with this equipment. Bill, you're a very mechanical fellow. Why don't we start with you? I have an idea, but it's probably wrong, so it's all right. With uh, the motor, the train, you built a better mouse trap. <laughs> no. You built an inferior mouse trap? <laughs> Could did be. this machine of yours, or the final contrivance, uh, I know it ran, but did it travel? 
Did it move as such over the ground? Or no. It stood still, though, and ran? Yes. And did it accomplish a useful purpose? I think so. Twenty dollars down, sixty dollars to go. Betsy Palmer. Um, is it used on land in preference to water, Mr. Mead? It doesn't make any difference. It doesn't make any difference. It could be you. Uh, Here we go again. Mr. Mead, <laughs> the way we run this, we don't argue. <laughs> uh, Betsy happens to be a wonderful girl. Just, you know, yes or no. Because otherwise, you, you, you give the clue away. It's better on I land. I mean, you give the answer away. It's better on land. Yeah. Good. Um, does it drive something? Uh, could you be more specific? Well, I mean, like, uh, be more specific. Does it drive, like, say, for instance, egg beaters? or beaters of some sort? Does it make a rotation of some sort that drives it or something? Yes. <laughs> that was more... I, 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 I did? It does drive yeah. something? It does drive something. It does it serve a practical purpose rather than, say, just a an experiment, a scientific experiment? Yes, I think so. You built it with a particular... particular... Uh, <laughs> And, and Henry's laughing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've but seen it. It, it does what, what Betsy said it does. It drives everything up and, and things. Yeah. And uh, what, could it be, is, it a, is there a pattern on it? A pattern? Pattern. No. Pattern or pattern? Pattern. Oh, pattern. Yes. Oh, we get to that. I'll tell you. The mining sort of disappeared. And there was one small industry that followed that. What was that? Tourists. Uh... Tourists. And last year, how many were there? Five. Five. Well, we, it's not a big industry. No, it's no. comfortable. I should stress the fact that Ironton is not a ghost town. It's uh, still incorporated by the state of Colorado, despite the fact that Mr. Larson is the only resident. Now, I know that you, uh, you told us you had um, electricity and you have a phone. Yes. Uh, how about uh, television? I haven't a television. No? No, I haven't. Oh, this was our one chance to have a rating of a hundred. <laughs> you know, if we watched this show, we'd have a perfect rating in Ireland. Nothing. Well, uh, friends, if you're looking for peace and quiet, if you want to get off the beaten track, Ironton, Colorado is the place. Everybody get in the car right now and go to Ironton. No, that way you'll run into too many Americans. <laughs> well, it's a town that has a soul. And this is the song. Oh. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> May we have our next contestant, please? How are you doing? Who are you? Would you tell us your name, please, and where you're from? My name is Dennis Mead, and I'm from Delaware, Ohio. Now, panel, at the moment, Mr. C, uh, Mr. Mead is a senior at Ohio Wesleyan. And he recently comp uh, completed a project for which he used, among other things, the following equipment. A one-sixth horsepower electric motor, two small transformers, one 26-inch bicycle wheel, six and a half feet of insulated wire, wire one oil temperature gauge, a fan from an air compressor, a telephone, and parts from three sewing machines. There's more, but these are the important items. 